currently we don't know that much about hyper dvg debugger we, we just know some very basic details about the debugger we will see some of the advanced sections uh, advanced debugging techniques in the next sections but uh, based on our, our current uh, knowledge about hyper dvg we could uh, we could do some uh, kind of examining the systems and and in the, and actually in this hands-on i i want to show you how you can start examining the targets by using hyper dvg how you can get some information about the target and from where you can actually start your uh, debugging and reversing journey. First, we're going to start uh, a 32 bit Phuket application, a simple network application. Then we will try to try trace it from kernel mode to user mode. Uh, and also, we will see some of the commands that we uh, that we see in this part. So, the basic scenario is like starting from user mode we will find the system call and the system call numbers then we try to trace it uh, trace the circuit and the function functions and calls and then we try to investigate and analyze the functionality so uh, again i have this uh, virtual uh, machine here i will uh, restore to, uh, to my snapshot and uh, I will also open uh, hyper dvg I don't no need to just administrator uh, I use the debug command uh, try to connect to the debugger and of course again I bring my WinDVG attached it to it because we want to make uh, we want to run it in the test mode so the driver signature enforcement will be disabled um, I try a debug version of the debugger Uh, currently the debugger is synchronizing the uh, symbol information so uh, the first thing that uh, we're gonna test here yeah for example currently we are uh, on the zeroth uh, core because signature shows that we are in the zeroth core so everything will be showed in the zeroth core now let's uh, try to switch to the second core again here's the second core it's operating in the kernel mode let's see if we can find any cores in user mode again this core is in in the same uh location uh, these are in the same location because currently probably these cores are idle so this way we could change uh, the uh, this could we could change the execution to other uh cores but let's return to the hyper dvg uh, and continue the debugging again uh, I, I try to use uh, that process command here uh, that process command shows the current uh, process uh, and we are currently in the first core and uh, cur the current uh, user mode process that is running into our system is hyper dvg cli if we uh, go to another core and see So that process now hyper dvg in the zero uh, zero uh, core is uh, debugging this application again to another core yeah this one is uh, currently running in the user mode because the address is a user mode address so uh, it's running in a user mode application and it's a vm tools vm tool sd it's a uh 
that's okay if we want to just see uh, the list of uh, processes we have to uh, configure uh, the symbol uh, files yeah uh, because of that uh, we need to use dot path I previously showed you how to set the symbols so I I don't want to explain it again. Just try to load them. And now again, uh, try the same command to see the list of processes. Uh, so here, a list of processes that, that, that are currently running on my system. If I, I want to switch to one of them, uh, I could easily use their process ID or their e process structure. For example, let's uh, switch to uh, some process that we know. Yeah, for example, Explorer. Explorer is the window, uh, this is the desktop or the window uh, for the windows. So the process ID is this in hexadecimal format so i tried that uh, just, just, um, and specify its uh, pid uh, now uh, whenever we press g the, the debugger tries to continue its execution and when when it reaches to the target process then it shows uh, then it gives the uh, control back to the debugger so if i try to use that process command you you can see that we are currently running in uh, explorer.exe uh, in the context of actually this process so that's how uh, we could use it also we have uh, options to use that thread command currently this thread this e thread is uh, running on our system so if i might just want to see a list of threads uh, that thread list uh, for process, this process, this explorer. Let's see the threads for this process. Yeah, uh, here is a list of threads that are currently running for uh, this dot thread uh, for this uh, explorer process. And uh, this this is a list. Uh, and also HyperDVG guarantees that it won't continue the debugging, like everything is uh, executed in the uh, uh, debugger, nothing is continued, uh, and then no processes get a chance to get it executed before this command is running. That's it for that process or that. Uh, and let's uh, see some of the scenarios in which we, uh, we could uh, see uh, some searches for example if we want to search for uh, a special pattern let's say for example this vm call this is the pattern for vm call zero uh, f uh, zero one c one this is an indication of a vm call instruction there might be other instruction that start with uh, this pattern or uh, has this pattern inside them but just simply we use lm command uh, to create a list of uh, uh, debuggy uh, uh, create a list of uh, drivers and the user mode applications that currently loaded and it just turns to black because i didn't uh, change it for a long time so let's find uh, the hyper dvg itself this is the process of a hyper dvg and uh, if i just want to make it bigger again use the lm command so uh, if i want to uh, see the commands uh, the the list of um, this list of drivers that start with hyper dvg let me just use on the kernel mode and 
and here we have uh, hyper WGHV aligned with uh, hyper WG uh, KD. Let's just uh, search for hyper WGHV, and this is the size. Um, also, the VM call uh, pattern is 0F01C1. So I added here and try to search it. Why did I use DS here? Yeah. So we have some mistakes in our command. C1. Why C0? Yeah. So it found two addresses. And if I want to unassemble or disassemble these addresses, we, we see that we have these functionalities. So it tries to search uh, for this VM call uh, instructions, all the VM call instructions in our target driver. These are the addresses. Uh, now let's. Uh, I I just wrote a very simple uh program uh, uh to just simply uh, send some HTTP request, some simple socket program, uh, nothing special. I, I I also try. I will put the source code for this program for you. But currently, if you want, if you want to uh, just test it on on the debugger, I try to move the executable file to the target VM. Okay, uh, this uh, this is a really simple function, uh, the simple in, in, uh, illustration of the socket uh, uh, function uh, in the Windows. There are some scenarios here. I use that. Uh, I use a debug break here uh, because I I just want to try to find some uh, some ways of examining how receiving and uh, over TCP works on Windows, so I try to simply create this project. Uh, I specify one IP address that uh, that is valid on my current system. For example, if we go on this target uh, IP, then we'll see. There's a simple IIS server I installed on my system. You can use whatever IP address that you want. Even a valid a web IP address is also okay. The host or the header for the HTTP is also not important. But the thing here is that I try to uh, run this uh, application, and uh, if there there was some errors here, we will try. We will try again. We will just try to uh, run it two times. I will tell you why you need to run it two times. So let's just uh, run the this application while HyperDVG is also running in the background. I try to run it, and when this process and wants to send some data uh, to the system, uh, HyperDVG will intercept it because there's a breakpoint here or a zero x cc uh, instruction is located here. So I will try to execute it to see how, I want to just see how, example, uh, sending data and receiving data works on Windows. So. I opened it, and as you can see here, um, the breakpoint is executed, and we are here in the middle of this application. Um, and if I try to just um, go through the instructions, like uh, I, I want to execute uh, 100, uh, 100 of instructions, um, 
to see how, how it works actually you can see that something is happening here after executing some instructions uh, in the user mode these are user mode addresses hyperdg goes to the kernel mode but um, he tries to handle some page faults um, so whenever we go to this function uh, ws2 underline 32 dll uh, then hyperdg tries to go to the key for a uh, key page fault function whenever you encounter these scenarios where hyperdg will go to the uh, page fault handler uh, this is simply because of some some of the mechanisms in windows for example uh, a mechanism in windows uh, just tries to uh, side load some dls some dls are not really loaded until someone tries to use them so windows tries to handle it by uh, invoking some page faults for example the, whenever the first access is made to the target dll then a page fault will, will occur and um, and hyperdg on the other hand will directly go to the page fault handler but almost certainly we are not interested uh, in the uh, page fault handler so let's just try to continue uh, our target uh, system and uh, another thing about this uh, process or this program is that uh, i try i try to run it two times the first time and uh, for the first time when when i run it and uh, it, it the windows first tries to load the functionality or the uh, dll file or the or bring uh, the data for the sender to the actual process so some page fault will happen and after that i will try to run uh, this uh, uh, function again two times and in the second time we won't uh, see any page faults like uh, no page fault happens because uh, we previously handled the page fault so we will have two breakpoints this is a really important note to consider when you are using hyperdvg and you are just uh, running on a page fault handler files a page file handler function so i try to run it again and uh, the first breakpoint is not important for us because it will eventually go to a page file handler and the second breakpoint when when the second breakpoint triggers then we, we could start uh, instrumenting instruction to see how how this uh, sending mechanism actually works on windows yeah here we see that it tries to uh, run some uh, functions like kernel 32 tls get value or other functions like this ws2 uh, underline 32 send function and after that it will go um, to the kernel so uh, i don't know about the system call uh, that is uh, designed for uh, sending a request to the uh, kernel so sending a, a network request or sending tcp or udp request so we will just try to investigate how it works uh, but as we can see here, uh, it eventually calls this NTDL function, and uh, th this is uh, this is uh, probably this is the uh, function that that is responsible for sending data or over TCP or over uh, other uh, over the network. So uh, NT device IO con control file will try to search it on internet and. Uh, as you can see here's the definition of the this function is actually deprecated but currently windows you use it uh, for sending data so i i just try to figure out what's the system call number for this um, uh, 
the system call so the system call number is always in rx registers i try to just run it a little bit uh, before because whenever we reach to this uh, stage uh, rax register let, let let's see if rx register is modified or not rx contains the um, target system call number no it's not modified so yeah uh, so if i just press r and see the uh, registers we, we, we could easily see that uh, this is the system call number for nt device io control file and also these are the parameters that are passed to this function let's try to run it again and instead of um, uh, seeing the system call number we want to see the actual parameters that are passed to this target to this uh, anti device control file io control file so i try to continue and we see, we see that we reach to the same breakpoint again and this time i will try to run like f0 this is in hexadecimal format so i try to run f0 uh number of instructions yeah again we are still in the user mode uh, we are not in the kernel mode so i try to just run the instructions one by one to see to the yeah uh currently uh, the, the next instruction that will be executed is syscall uh instruction so at this point we should have parameters because uh in system call uh the parameters are passed in fast call format so the first parameter here uh the first parameter uh, is uh, the, the the rx register co contains the system call number uh the second uh the second uh, the first parameter is, is passed in r6 register so this is the file handle the actual file handle that is used by uh this process for this function uh, the second one is the event handle which is passed on rdx register and r8 is also used for the apc routine or the third uh, third uh, parameter and the fourth parameter is also zero r9 which is also apc context uh, so this is and uh, and other parameters are also passed in a stack for example we could easily see uh, the input buffer that uh, this process tries to send to the uh, target uh, program for example if ju i just want to uh, see the stack for uh, this process let's just see the stack like i use the dq uh, instruction and use the uh, rsp or the stack uh, this the, there is some uh, special stack pointers i think uh, uh, for fast it starts from 28 in hexadecimal format so just uh, let's just try to see uh, if we are in the target uh find the target parameters uh this one is a uline uh, uh this one's a uline uh parameter so we could see that the actual uh, ioctl or ioctl uh, io control code that uh IO control code, not, not IO CTO. This IO control code that passed to this uh, anti device IO control file is actually this value. If we, if we just want to see the input buffer, then we have to add eight uh, bytes to this stack so we will get some addresses like this 
uh, just uh, try to uh, like search a little bit about the target address uh, and uh, you might reach uh, to some good hints of how to start uh, <laughs> like how we can start um, examining the target uh, that that that's enough let's just try to uh, I think this is enough for understanding how to work with hyperdigi and how you can start your debugging but uh, another thing that I want to mention here is how we can use the tracking commands of the hyperdigi to just get an idea how this uh, functionality actually works in the target operating system so I try to run the target symbol stand file again uh, we get we got to the uh, second uh, break point and I will use that uh, I, I will use track command uh, as you can see this command tries to run the instructions and create a list of functions that are called during the execution you can always uh, finish the execution or uh, or stop the execution by pressing control plus c but let it work for some times to create a list of functions that are called uh, when this functionality or when sending some data the kernel is invoked from the user uh, as you can see here uh, first these two fun uh, the, this function is called and after that it returns in this address and hyperdwg don't know what are these addresses because probably hyperdwg uh, doesn't have uh, the symbol file for this address uh, and after that there are also other functions in this stage the hyperdwg transfer the execution from user mode to the kernel mode as we can see here First, NT uh, IOPXXX control file is called, and after that, uh, these functions are called. Um, so, again, uh, in in this special function, uh, NT uh, OB reference object by handle, which is located at this address this function is called and after that as we can see we can follow it here this function is also returned at this address so this is the return address of this function called and this function is also called and in this function these functions are also called recursively like uh, this these functions are called inside this function you can see after this function didn't execute any function it just returns on this address and uh, again this function didn't execute uh, didn't call any function and yeah i think you got the idea you can try to save these results for further investigation and hyperdg will continue to create some results for you so you can use them to uh, examine the target and you, you can start your uh, reversing journey from here right now we don't know that much about the hyper dvg debugger in the uh, future sections we will uh, know a lot about the advanced techniques that are used by hyper dvg or how you can use uh, main features of the hyper dvg but this is just a starting point of 